So today I'm going to be addressing a video called Crap Science 4 Human Chimp Genetic Similarity uh, by a YouTube user calling himself Raving Conservative or uh, Otto. Hello, welcome to Raving Conservative. I'm Daniel Levick, your host. Oh, it's not Otto, it's Daniel. I'm sorry, I have no idea why why I was calling you Otto. I, uh, my apologies. I have notes I'm going to be referring to throughout this to make sure that I'm getting everything right. That's good to hear because I know an important part of uh, the creation science movement is, you know, factual honesty. Uh, this is another episode of Crap Science. That's one thing that we are in absolute agreement about. And today we are tackling uh, the science of of humans and chimps being, well, depending on who's writing or speaking, anywhere from 96 to 99 percent genetically identical. This is a lie. A lie? My God! You know, if only there were some procedures in place by which, oh, I don't know, scientists and other, geneticists and other scientists, you know, had to, I don't know, make their findings available, not only to other researchers, but also even to the general public who want to take the time to look it up themselves. Um, wouldn't it just be amazing if somehow all of these gene sequences could be compared by even an interested amateur who could download the free software to, that it takes to cross-compare genetic sequences with each other and actually come up with their own conclusions about what these percentages really are. If only that were possible. Uh, oh, wait. Allow me to explain why. Oh, please do. The first point that I'd like to bring up is one that I have yet to actually see addressed in any articles that I have been able to find uh, on this subject. Oh, uh, go right ahead, but can I ask one small favor before you start? Would it be possible for you to uh, make this explanation, bring up this point, without actually relying on any of the uh, you know douchebags like Jeffrey Thompson, Jeff, Jeffrey Tompkins from uh, ICR or Dave Nutting? Um, you know those kind of arguments that rely on the audience being completely ignorant about the definition of a chromosome versus the definition of a um, base pair. Uh, one that uses actually bad mathematics because they don't really understand the difference between haploidy and diploidy. Um, as long as it's not one of those explanations, uh, go right ahead. Knock yourself out. And that is the fact that the chimpanzee genome is actually 10% larger than the human genome. No. Okay. I had this explained to me by a creation scientist at a seminar. Um, this man would have made Kent Hoven facepalm uh, for his stupidity. Um, he threw out that same figure, that chimpanzees have 10% more DNA than humans do. How do we explain that? And I had to, during the Q&A, I... I had to ask this question, where did that number come from? Because that certainly doesn't agree with absolutely anything in the published literature. And this was before the chimpanzee genome was published, even. Uh, before the actual sequence, the, the draft sequence was published. And uh, this guy, he, he, he explained to me like I was an idiot. Well, do you know that human beings have 23 pairs of chromosomes? Well, yes, I do. Do you know that chimpanzees have 24 pairs of chromosomes? Yes, I know that also. Well, that means that chimpanzees have 5% more chromosomes than Homo sapiens. But because that's 23 pairs, that's twice as much. That's 5% times 2 equals 10% more DNA in a chimp than in humans. I, 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 if I could have thrown the chair at the guy, I would have thrown the chair at the guy. Okay? Um... Chromosome count has nothing to do with DNA, how much DNA uh, chimpanzees and humans. Chimpanzees actually do have a slightly more, a uh, higher percentage of base pairs of the 3.3 giga pairs that humans have. Marginally, that's in substitutions, uh, not substitu I'm sorry, not substitutions, that is in duplications. Um, and that's been shown, that's, that's one of the big revelations of the Chimpanzee Genome Project. Another aspect of human and chimp genetics that evolutionists parade all over the place is the so-called fuse chromosome. Oh my god, I can't tell you how much fun it was at my last Robertsonian translocation parade. 
Oh, it was amazing. We all got a little wild during that one. But seriously here, um, I got to ask, what do you think of the uh, evidence that has been seen both in the wild and in the laboratory for chromosome fusion, Robertsonian translocation, in things like silkworms, golden moles, African antelope, yeast, grasshoppers, fruit flies, cattle, domestic and wild, salmon, and horses? Do you doubt that that's occurred? Do you think that that is equally as flawed and fraudulent as the, the fused chromosome 2 in humans? Uh, or is it just in people that the identical evidence uh, is, is false? I'm curious. The fact is that each of these chromosomes in a chimpanzee contain uh, DNA sequences that are not present in humans near the tips. Did you even read the sources you provided in your um, this video? Those uh, extra DNA that you refer to in the uh, chimpanzee chromosomes are actually just real basic gene duplications, repeated, uh, repeated gene duplications in the ends of those chromosomes. This kind of duplication happens to take place much, much, much more commonly in the subtelomeric regions of the chromosome, which are out towards the ends. As the, cro the fused chromosome in humans, that region is no longer at the ends, this kind of duplication is not occurring as frequently there. It's very, very simple. This joined telomere is smaller than a single terminal telomere in a chimp or a gorilla or any other primate other than in humans. How big it is? What the fuck does how big it is have anything to do with anything? You're sitting there alarmed that the telomere in the center of the chromatid is too small? It shouldn't be there in the first place. So, Bob, I hear this new girlfriend of yours has a penis. Yeah, she does, but um, it's all right, though. It's, it, it's slightly smaller than average. So evolutionists have two not insignificant problems to, uh, to address when it comes to the so-called fused chromosome evolutionists do have two problems with this chromosome issue. The first problem is the relative scientific illiteracy of the American public. Uh, the second is the fact that there are con men out there using this scientific illiteracy to line their own pockets, deceiving the public into believing that life-saving medical tools should be denied us because they can perpetuate a Bronze Age superstition. Now, interestingly, a 2003 study found that when you laid out the human and chimp genome side by side, that there was actually only 86.7% genetic similarity. Wrong. You obviously didn't read the Anzai et al. paper from the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. This paper is what is ex explanation of why you cannot look at gene sequences in parallel because of gene duplication. Nematodes those share about 75% similarity to humans. Wrong. Didn't you even read the original source? It says that nematode worms share 75% gene orthologs with other animals, including humans, not in genetic sequence. Now, in researching this... Since when is repeating half-understood claims from creationist websites called research? I have a slightly different phrase for your methodological approach. I'm trying to fill in ignorance with assumptions that come from ignorance. Exactly. Now, if anybody can adequately explain all these differences in a way that, in a way that does not rely on faith, ignorant conjecture, or other scientifically irresponsible and pointless exercises, to find the answers you want, you're going to have to read the primary literature yourself and stop relying on the summaries provided by sources like Apologetics Press. Well, looks like I'm out of time. I sure wish I could remember why I keep wanting to call you Otto. You think you're an intellectual, don't you, ape? Apes don't read philosophy. Yes, they do, Otto. They just don't understand it.